welcome to Matplotlib Basics Lecture. So Matplotlib module allows for data visualization in both 2D and 3D plots. It also allows for animation and interactivity. So you should have Matplotlib installed by default with the Anaconda distribution. So you can then import the module. If not, go to your command terminal and type in either conda or pip install matplotlib. Likewise, you should have the Python image library module installed by default. If not, go to your command terminal and type in either conda or pip install pillow. Okay, so we're going to be covering the basics here, which are line plots, adding style, and lastly, saving and importing our plots. I have a path variable here, which is for C, users, your name here, desktop, and then matplotlib which is the name of an empty folder I have on my desktop, as you can see here. Okay, so what we're going to do is import the relevant modules, which are, of course, matplotlib.pyplots as plt by convention, and also numpy as np. And also we have a magic function here called matplotlib in line. Now, this particular line of code here, matplotlib in line, cannot be used in any other IDE. So going to be used in Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter QT console. And what it does essentially is make it easier for Jupyter Notebook kernel to display and keep the plots stored in the notebook. Okay, so what we're going to do is make some data here. So we'll have x equals mp dots range 1, 10, raised power of 2, we'll have y equals mp dots range 1, 20, step size of 2. And lastly, z equals mp dot range. It's going to be 140 step size of 4 raised to the power of 2. Okay, so I'm just going to show a very simple plot here. So we just have plots x and run it as it is. Okay, so you can see the output here, which has a default color of blue and this particular line width. And we also have this line of code here that's not too pretty. So the way to get rid of that is plt dot show, like so. Okay, so let's create something a little bit more interesting than that. And what we'll have here is a few lines. And what I'd like you to do is hold either the control or command button, depending upon your operating system, and then simply left click. Like so, and then plt dots plots, and then we'll have x and then label equal to x. We'll change these in a moment to the y and z as well. Then we'll have line width equal to 5, marker equal to do the carrot sign for a triangle, and marker size equal to, let's say, 15. Okay, then I'm going to change these to, let's say, S and O. So S and O are for the square and circle markers. And then, we'll, of course, we'll have the capital Y and the capital Z. And we'll have Y and Z for the data as well. And then I'll have plt.show. But that's... Okay, great. So we have our plot here with the green, orange, and blue colors that have been given automatically by default, and therefore the Z, Y, and X data. Okay, so let's say I want to add in a title here and also the labels for the Y and X axis, and perhaps I want to have a legend as well, and maybe increase the size of the ticks here for the Y and the X axis here. So what I can do is have plt dots x label we'll do let's say time as a constant font size equal to let's say we'll do 15 semicolons keep it on the same line plt dot y label just have the price then font size equal to again 15 otherwise it would make sense then plt dot title and we'll have here let's say graph underscore one font size equal to let's say 22 color you can change the color to say dark red and let's say we have lock and this is the position of the title so by default it's in the center here but it can also be on the left and the right here so the position is by default center but you can change this to being right or being left i'm going to just keep this as center okay let's run that see what we get Great, so we have our title, we have the labels here for price and time. Now let's say I want to increase the ticks, and also I want to have a legend here. What I can do is have plt dots x ticks. I'll just do font size equal to, say, 15, 
semicolon to keep on the same line, plt.y ticks. Again, font size equal to 15, see what we'll get. Okay, it's not too bad. And then we'll have the legend, so plt.legend. And then we're gonna have in here, let's say, font size equal to, let's do 18, and we'll have lock. And this is the position, so you can actually have a string, or you can have a number, two numbers here, for the height and the width. So it could be either left or right or up and down. So we'll have here, let's say, just one and one for now, and we'll adjust it where need be. Okay, so what we can also do is have a string, I'll just show you. And this is one of many strings that you can have. So it's the best fits that's done by defaults. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually have my own one. So I'll put in the numbers again. And just remember that these numbers here represents, this is for the left and right, and this number here is for the up and down. So I wanna have it around this location here. So I'll just do, let's say 0 0.3 and put this as 1.1, like so. I'd encourage you to experiment with this if you wanna change it into a different position. But I'm gonna keep it there. All right, so let's say I want to save this graph and also increase the size because this size here is just by defaults. So what we need to do is go up to the very top. You have to put this above all the other code, otherwise it won't work. And we'll have figure and then fig size equal to, let's say 10 and four on well, that. So as you can see, it's very wide now. So the 10 here is for the width and the four is for the height. So I can increase the height if I wanted to let's say eight, like so, so it's more of a square almost. And I'm just gonna keep that as how it was before. Okay, and then I actually want to save this. So what I can do is above the plt.show, we'll have plt. it's gonna be save fig. And then we'll have in here the title. So I'm gonna call this my first awesome graph then have a format of png then vpbox inches is essentially going to remove the white space that you had here and then we're going to have here a dpi for the size that's going to be saved as so i'll do 100 okay so i'm just going to save this actually i need to have path plus so that's going to be stored in this particular folder here. So path plus my awesome graph. And I'll just check here path. Okay, so I need to actually define it. So C users slash Michael slash this is going to be desktop slash matplotlib slash. Well, that's okay. So this should work now. As you can see here. So just open this up. Great, so we have our graph saved. All right, so moving on from that, let's say I want to actually open up this graph in my actual Jupyter Notebook. So I actually make another one, or you know, we'll open up another one, go to Python 3, and then we'll do from, and this is gonna be pill, which is the Python import library. We'll have image method, and then my image equals image dots open and then we'll have here it's going to be c user slash michael slash desktop slash mats plots lib slash my that should be let me just double check my first awesome graph my first awesome graph dot png and then we'll have here my image of well, that okay great there you go all right so moving on from that let's say i want to create a new graph here and what we're going to have is some data first so data equals is square brackets and then all you're gonna do is have the cursor three times. So just press the control or command button, depending on your operating system. So we have three lines. That's so gonna be mp.random.randint, one, 20, and 10, then comma, and run that. 
and check our data. Okay, great. What I'm going to do here is have a for loop. So for i in range len data colon plt dot plot. So instead of having three plots for each of our data points, which are x, y, and z, let's say we have just one plot method used. We're going to have three lines. Okay, so we're going to have here data, and then we index by i, and then label equals in square brackets a, b, and c. Again, we index by i, and then we have marker equals, we have circle, diamonds, and then we'll have s for square. Index by i, then if you want to keep something constant, then obviously you don't index that at all. Then I'll we'll keep that on the same line. Color equals we'll have different colors for them, so pink, B for blue, and G for green. Index by I again. Then keep the line width constant, so 5. And we'll add some more in a moment. Okay, then I'm also going to have the PLT dots show and see what we get first. So I'm just going to delete that line and just scroll down a little bit, see what we get for our outputs. Okay, so we've got the pink one, the blue one, and the green one here with our respective markers. All right, great. So let's say we want to alter this a little bit and make it a little bit more distinct. So what we can do is have a color for each of the markers. In this case, I want to have red for all of them. So we'll have, let's say, marker face color equals off red. And then we'll have line style. So it doesn't have to just be a single line. It could be different types of line, like dashes, for example. So I'm going to have here dash dash, the normal line. And then we'll have here dash and dots, indexed by i. And then we'll have marker edge width equals 5. That's going to have a line around each of these markers. But also I'm going to have, let's say, plt dots x ticks font size equal to, let's do 18, and semicolon to keep on the same line, of course, y ticks font size equals 18, and plt dots grid. Now that's what this is going to do is by default it's false, but it's going to have some lines up and down, just like a normal graph. And then we'll have here a legend plt dots legends square brackets a b and c index by i font size equal to let's say 20 and lock equal to position of 1.1 and 0.3 okay so just go scroll down so we can see the output in totality okay so we have the pink one the blue one and the green one here as well. Okay, great. So it's a lot more distinct now. All right, so lastly, let's say we want to have all of the lines on one single plot. Well, what we can do is have list comprehension here because this is a for loop that we've used. So we can convert this into a list comprehension. I'm gonna keep this very simple though. So I'm going to have plt.plots data indexed by i, label equals a, b, and c, again indexed by i, marker equals o, that's going to be circle, hexagon, and let's say we have triangle, then again of course we index by i, so wherever there's a list you simply index it, otherwise you don't, then Marker size 20, color equals, let's say, light green, light, light blue, and G for green, indexed by I. And then we'll have 4I in. I'm just going to lower this down. We'll have in 4I in range len data. And then we'll have, of course, plt.show. But that's as you can see here. Okay, great. So that concludes my lecture on the basics for Matplotlib with the lines and styling. I'll see you in the next lecture.